Let me, hold on. Hey, what's up? I'm Rachel Starr. Uh, this was the third video. I did the first one for um, Ask, Sch Ask, Ask a Schizophrenic, where you sent me questions, and then I did the replies the next week. And then the idea was that for the third week, uh, other people with bipolar, schizophrenia, other mental disorders who felt like they wanted to answer some of the questions to um, answer them, and I would share their answers. I, what I figured happened happened and that I just got like a ton more um, questions like just they just came flooding in so yeah uh, and I've been doing my best uh, for those of you who, who emailed me I'm like it's really hard for me to answer emails and um write it just my writing comes and goes so and usually it's in like spurts and I can't always like yeah focus on certain topics um, so I'm trying to get back to all of you, I promise. I'm not trying to be like a, a, a douche and just like, yeah, ignore your your emails. I really am trying to get through them. Um, so yeah, uh, however, a few of you did send me some emails um, and responses to things and two topics definitely came up and I just wanted to hit on both of them. Um, one is ECT. As you all know, I'm kind of like super for ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, because it worked for me. Okay, whatever your situation is, you know, it might work for you, it might not. It is kind of considered a last, like, resort situation, um, and it's not some, and a decision to be taken lightly in any way. Like, this is, they're going to electrocute your brain. You could very well have brain damage, like I did, and like a lot of people who have it. Some people don't. Um, so a lot of people definitely sent me stories that, I don't feel like I, I was supposed to like share because I don't know just the way it was worded it wasn't no one seemed to exactly say I want you to share this in your video I don't want to invade anyone's privacy but yeah there are a lot of horror stories from ECT especially if you got it like probably 70s 80s 60s I don't know um, a lot of people with the horror stories are significantly older um, than me so I had mine in I don't know mid 2000 I, I I can't even like I don't even know I don't know find the date on watch if you forget that's when I had it okay um uh, just a few years back yeah and there's two different types there's unilateral and bilateral from what it seems like I had unilateral which is where it just goes in one and like circles around and pops out the other end the electric electrical current and that causes um more brain damage than bilateral um, at least that that's some of what I've been told with that said um, yeah it can be very very bad um, it's not like in the movies where you're you know and you're a vegetable but yeah ECT is messing around with electrocuting your brain and no I don't ever want to I guess in my last video I was very flippant in the way I talked about it and I didn't mean to be um, it was just, I was going over a lot of topics, so please don't think that, yeah, that I'm just kind of like, oh yeah, ECT is like a little pill you pop. It's not. It's, it's, it's a big decision, and you definitely need a very strong support system to help you through that time, because um, for me, it was two weeks, and that was pretty much, I no doing anything for two weeks, because my brain was getting shocked and electrocuted. So, yeah, no driving, no no anything. So it's not just like... A small little treatment you do during the morning and then you could pop back into work it's, it's not like that at all you definitely need somebody uh, watching over you to a degree at least checking on you and driving you to and from whether that's a neighbor you pay some money to or yeah a family member like I have my wonderful family to help me out anyway so there are a lot of horror stories and the, for those of you who felt um, that I don't stress that enough yeah I I I had brain damage from ECT. I had to relearn how to read and write, and that's one of the main reasons I still have trouble reading and writing today, is because of the ECT. However, for me, it was worth it, because I don't honestly think I would be here right now had I not had it. I was in really almost into a very, like, I, I, the months leading up to my ECT and what caused me to get it was I was just such in a depressive haze. Nothing existed. I, I was in college, and I don't know how I got to class. I don't know how I, I like, I, I was such, like, a robotic, like, Rachel, Rachel was so gone. 
and I didn't know how to explain it other than I was just so, so gone. Um, like, it was really just, like, my body functioning and just everything became this horrible haze. And, yeah, pretty much it, it took all my energy to, like, take a shower once a week. Like, the, it, it was really bad. Um, that is why I had ECT. Um, anyway, so for those of you who are definitely sending me a lot of emails um, and those who are considering ECT, do your research. Like with anything, my goodness, do your research. <laughs> Understand that this is a big decision, okay? Do your research on the good and the bad because, yeah, it can, it can and very well might cause brain damage. And, you know, for me, I was a senior in college and had to relearn how to read and write. It definitely was difficult, but verse not being here. Okay, and the thing I always say, if I get back in that state, um, where I've had a few scares, where I thought I was getting stuck back in that state again, then yes, I would have ECT. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. If that's what it took, sure, I'll, I'll have it again. It's, it's you know, I'm... Yeah, I know I, I wouldn't even think twice if I got back in that state and I've told my family this and stuff, should I slip into that state before I can stop it? Just be like, yeah, put me through it. I'm good with that. Um, the other thing that I got, oh my gosh, you guys, it's the drugs. Why is it that people who smoke weed, like... They're so, you you would really think they're laid back. And then the minute you say anything, they, they flip out. And I wasn't, I don't even remember, like, I'm too lazy to look back in the video what I did say. But I upset a lot of people. How can you dare say, you know, you're all for taking medicine drugs and then you don't blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. Do I think people with mental disorders should take weed and stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I've never done it, so I'm sorry if, um, yeah. Uh, it was funny, though. A lot of people that emailed me, I don't feel like were people with mental disorders who were telling me that it helps their mental disorders. I think it was just people upset that I said that. So, yeah. Uh, but no one really, like, sent me any stories saying, no, um, smoking marijuana or such and such has really helped me like, gave me, like, an argument to share. It was more just like, how could you, how dare you could say it? And, like, Braiding me in. I don't know. So, if any of you out there who are, are going to get upset again about this, um, want to like share your story with me, and of course, I'm not going to tell your name, I promise. <laughs> okay, like you want to email me, Rachel, smoking weed has helped my hallucinations go away, stuff like that. Yeah, s send me that. I will totally share it. And I don't know what else you want me to say on that subject, so yeah, people were very, uh, at least I got like five really, really angry, heated emails of how dare you say this, this, and this, but they didn't really, yeah. Anyway, we're just going to move on. Um, so these were the comments on the page. Just wanted to scroll through and go over those real quick. And thank you all, those of you who wanted to share, yeah, that's awesome, and I hope whether or not you feel you can or not at some point in your life, you definitely feel like you can reach out to others um, like us who are in this situation. Uh, let's see here. My delusions, I believe, sometimes that I'm hyper-intelligent, being that I have a profound knowledge and that other people can be too primitive to understand. I feel like I'm persecuted a lot, and that kind of plays into the superior being delusional. I believed I could read minds and see the future, and this led to a lot of inappropriate and bizarre behavior, most of which I heard about from other people. I'm sure there are a lot of times when I just don't remember the psychosis. Yeah, those of you who, who have delusions and stuff, like a lot, when I'm in the delusion, it makes sense, okay? Like, it makes sense. I always tell people this, you know, um, I have family members will contact me and be like, you know, so-and-so, they think they're like the savior of the world, and I'm like, yeah. If, like, you're walking around and things start moving, you see things that no one else sees, that you're exceptional and that you're a savior type person, is obviously, like, that's common sense. Like, seriously, like, that that would be your mental thing. If you have voices talking to you that no one else can hear, that means you're different. I mean, that's, yeah. But it's understanding that those voices are coming from you, um, those delusions. So 
yeah, when you're in that delusional state, it is very hard to just snap out of it. There is no just wake up, come back to the real world. So I definitely agree with what they said there. Um, on that, someone else playing off that comment, what do you do if your delusions don't calm down? For instance, like when I go in my car, it says, um, and what happens when other people can trigger your memories? Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's another question. Uh, you know, I wish I could tell you that, hey, every time I make it to my car and it's awesome, I have a tendency to sleep in the parking lot. Um, I've come to a couple times, like, in the parking lot, like, I don't know why I was laying on the ground. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I was on a, a small, small mini road trip with someone, and I got, deli I get, um, I get feelings like there's animals, like bugs and stuff inside of me crawling, and I'm like wanting to rip it out of me, and I got out, I had to stop on the highway, get out of the car, and then I like literally was like wanting to go to take a nap on the side of the highway. Because it was like, no, I just need to lay here, and this, this is a nice spot. This is, this is good. You know, anyone else would be like, clearly there's something wrong with you. But when I'm in those, mo those times, I'm, I don't know, it's like, I do remember one thing from waking up on this pavement, like my thoughts right before was that I was so hot and that, and this was, oh, by the way, this was like January. Um, and I was like, I was just so, like, I felt like my insides were burning up. And I just, I remember thinking I have to lay down and cool off and the pavement felt amazing. Yeah. And then I came to like, what am I doing on the pavement? So no, not, do I always make it to my car? Is there always, yeah, I make it home in time? No. Nah. Um, I'm never have had anything really bad though happen from that. And I'm very lucky for that. I mean, that, that any of those situations could have turned horrible, but, um, they haven't. And I think just over time, the best thing I do is I have a lot of warning signs that I have to jump on. And whenever I see those warning signs, I can't wait any longer because yeah, if I don't pay attention, I very well can quickly be like on the side of the road doing something retarded. <sighs> So, can people trigger your memories, or are they literally gone? Uh, certain things can trigger them. Like, a, a lot of things, like something like my brother will say a lot of times will, like, kind of make me flash back to, like, I'll remember stuff, like, from childhood. That's just, like, things I hadn't thought about in forever, you know? But most of them are gone. Gone. So, let me read through some of the other stuff here. Oh, someone, uh, I thought this was really cool. There are eight-hour recordings of fans, washing machines, ambient sounds, celestial noise, etc. on YouTube. Run a search. BCS? I don't know what that means. BCS. Um, if you're with a fan somewhere. Oh, if you want, if you have net. And then your comfort so shall remain. So that was a pretty cool thing. Like what they said, they're like actually putting in a recording. So yeah, if that helps you, go, go for it. <laughs> I'm not going to read that one. You got, I mean, I don't delete any comments unless they're, um, overly sexual, but, oh, oh, oh. Uh, someone asked, do I smoke? No, um, I have never smoked cigarettes. I'm actually allergic to cigarette smoke, so, no. Um, I do know a lot of people with schizophrenia, and yeah, they smoke a lot. Um, me, no. No one in my family smokes. I didn't grow up around it, so, no. I don't have any opinions on the calmingness of it, because I just, I, it's, not even, yeah. So, sorry. I know a lot of, um, one person said, yeah, it definitely calms them to have a cigarette, but I have no opinion on that, so, you know. Just remember lung cancer. I mean, yeah, but, um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm, I've smoked for a long time, and i found many people with mental illnesses smoke by observing and doctors telling me. I tried to quit, but whenever I do, I tend to have more hallucinations, and my moods become less stable. Um, I, I guess, yeah, I understand that. I mean, anyone, when you see them trying to stop smoking, they definitely get grumpy. And I would imagine, yeah, if you're a, a schizophrenic and have hallucinations, they're going to get grumpy. You got to do what... <laughs> you got to do what, what you need to do. You know, I mean, I don't... I, I, this goes back to, like, the, the drug thing. I... I don't know. There is no right or wrong. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, that's, I, I, I don't know. Um, 
Interesting. Someone uh, commented about the hair shortness, uh, the, the short hair question. I'm bipolar too. When I'm in that down roller coaster phase, I usually don't get too depressed. In my case, I get redrawn. Oh, withdrawn. I'm sorry, probably withdrawn. I want to be left alone. My OCD gets worse along with my a a ADHD. I talk a lot alone and get aggressive if people don't leave me alone. I don't really know why. I think it's a combination of being bored and wanting some, some change fast. I usually either dye my dreads or get a tattoo or do something on me. And it's not negative, but something that makes me like feel stronger. Yeah, uh, that, that's definitely a thing when you get in that. When I'm manic, I have to be very careful because I'll just kind of flip out and do like crazy stuff um and a lot of times when i'm self-destructive meaning wanting to hurt myself i will do something else to stop me from doing that um i have to be really careful with uh yeah i've, I've actually cut my hair short really really short once before i can't think about it i can't remember why i did that though i think it was just yeah it was like ah, i'm gonna do it i don't know i don't know but yeah so, this, yeah, pointing out the dreads, tattoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you think when Willy Wonka, when the Willy Wonka commercial said, unleash your imagination, you were like, no! I don't know, that was just funny. Anyway. Um, this person said, challenging your depressive, anxious thoughts never works for me. Okay? And that, now people all the time would be like, I can't talk to my hallucinations. You're going to have to figure out what works for you. Try different things. The one thing I've always said um, that's interesting for me about schizophrenia is that, it, for me at least, it's always changing. Um, it is a constant... <sighs> finding what works and what doesn't work and sometimes things that used to help me don't help me anymore. Sometimes I have hallucinations that will drive me crazy for months and then they'll just stop. Mm. Sometimes play, um, me having the fan running in the background helps me, like eases my mind and stuff. And other times it will drive me out of my skull. Okay? You're not going to find just one magic thing and suddenly it's all okay. It's going to be constantly... Figuring out what works for you, what works for this hallucination, um, the shaking thing. Let's see. Uh, uh, not really. Right now. Huh. Um, I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why I shake. Okay, it's either tardive dyskinesis or something else. I don't know. It's come out of nowhere though. It seems in the past, the uh, since Decemberish maybe. Um, it's been getting steadily worse and worse. Uh, I know when I get nervous, I shake more, and sometimes I just shake. Sometimes I am sitting at home alone, just hanging out, watching TV, and I look down and realize I'm just, like, going out of control. Not a clue. Okay? The nervousness I understand. Other times it's just, eh. The other day I was, like, trying to to write. Uh, I was sending something to someone, and I'm, like, trying to write their address, and my hand was just going out of control, and they're going to be, like, I'm, like, holding the pen, like, you know, like this, because of like, the shaking, just trying to, like, steady myself. I have no clue. I No reason to be nervous. I... Like, I wasn't at the post office. Like, everyone's waiting on me. Like, I was at, at I was at my parents' house on the kitchen table trying to fill out this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. You're just, you gotta, like, keep finding things that work for you. Try different things. And don't get discouraged. Just because, like, you know, something works for me or some other person. And you're like, Rich, that doesn't work for my hallucinations. You figure out what works. And you know what? It might not work in a week. But guess what? You made it to that week. So you find the next thing to keep making it to the next week until you like look back on a few years and you're like, hey, I look back. I was so embarrassed when I had to get a nightlight. I, was, I remember I was in college and that's like eons ago. You know what I think? I can't even like, I don't even know which hallucinations I had that needed that nightlight. Okay. I have no, I did no memory of what they were. Doesn't matter though. It's years later. Hey, I made it. I guess that's what it, you know, comes down to and what I want, I guess, to express to you guys and anyone else out there dealing with mental disorders and um, depression and different things. Look how far you've made it this this far. I worry about your brother. Okay? Think about a year from now. You can make it through this. 
right? You can. You're not broken and you're not messed up. Okay? You're just different. And you got to find ways to adjust. But you can. And yeah, it's going to be like, this isn't something that you're going to wake up from. This isn't something that, hey, they're going to magically give you a certain medication and it's all going to be better. And you can be like everybody else. It's not that. But that's not a bad thing. You just got to figure out what works for you. You need to be aware that you have this disorder, whichever you know you have or situation, and make it work. And some of them always ask, would I have my schizophrenia taken away if I could? Um, you know, where I'm at now, I mean, there are some times when I was younger and um, had a lot of problems where I'd probably be like, yes! Uh, where I'm at now, no. No, um, I contribute why I'm so creative to my schizophrenia. And one thing is that because I've had it and had to go through like so many different things, um, it's really interesting because it makes me like identify with other people better. Nothing makes me sadder than seeing someone with Alzheimer's. Because it's like I know exactly what that person's going through. Um, it's interesting when family members email me and they're trying to understand why, you know, their daughter is doing this. And I'm like, oh, I know exactly why they're doing this. <laughs> I can tell you, I've been there. I've had those exact, I can tell you, it makes no sense to you. But, oh, it makes perfect sense to me. You're not broken, okay? And you can do this.